Hi and welcome to the second of our exam prep videos for probability. This video covers questions on Venn diagrams. Question 1 says sets A and B are such that the number of elements in A is 11, the number in B is 13 and the number in A or B is 18. Then first we are asked to calculate the number of elements in A and B. Then in 1.2, we're told that A and B are sets in a sample space with 20 values and we're asked to draw a Venn diagram to illustrate this. And then for 1.3, we are asked to determine the probability that an item selected at random is in either A or B. Pause the video now to try this. So to be able to answer this first question, we need to use the equation that is true for any two events. We can then make the number of elements in A and B the subject, substitute our given values and solve. Then for 1.2, we create a sample space of a total of 20 elements with two circles representing events A and B. Then from 1.1, we know that the number of elements in A and B, in other words, in the overlap, is 6. We can then calculate the number of elements in A only by subtracting 6 from the 11 elements in the whole of A and the same for the number of elements in B only. We then check the total number of elements in A or B by adding 5 and 6 and 7 and see that there are 18 elements, which means that because there is a total of 20 elements in the sample space, two elements must be outside of A and B. And that is our Venn diagram. Then for 1.3, the probability of an element being randomly selected from A or B, well, we add these elements together, divide by the total number of elements in the sample set, and see that the probability is 9 over 10, or 90%. In question 2, we're given events A and B with the probability of A, 0,37, the probability of B, 0,53, and the probability of A or B, 0,7, and we're asked to calculate these three probabilities. Pause the video for a moment to read through the question, and then try it. You may have noticed that this question doesn't specify that you need to use a Venn diagram, but it is a good option for answering these types of questions. So first of all, the information is given in probabilities, and so we can use the equation true for any two events to calculate the probability of A and B. Once we've calculated that, then we can draw the Venn diagram by filling this in first, 0,2, and then calculating what is in A only, and in B only, just like the previous example. The only difference this time is that we're working with probabilities. Then also, like the previous example, we calculate the probability of what lies outside of A and of B, and that's this 0,3. And so for 2.2, B and not B are complementary events, and so we can see that the probability of not B is either everything outside of B or 1 minus the probability of B. And then for 2.3, not A or not B is everything except the overlap A and B. And so you can either calculate the probability by saying 1 minus 0, 0,2 or by adding these areas. Question 3 now. Here we are given information about events A and B and we're asked to determine the maximum and minimum possible values for each of the following. Pause the video here to give question 3 a try. The maximum number of elements in A and B will occur when all of B, which is the event with the fewer number of elements, is in A. In other words, when B is a subset of A, and this maximum will therefore be 12. And then the minimum number of elements in A and B will occur when these events are disjointed, in other words, when their overlap is empty. And so this minimum value is then zero. For the number of elements in A or B, this time the maximum will occur when the events are disjointed with a maximum value of 30. And the minimum number of elements in A or B will occur when B is a subset of A and this minimum value is 18. Now for a question where the Venn diagram is provided. Question four asks us to refer to the Venn diagram alongside. 
It is given that the number of elements in R or Q is 68, and we are asked to determine the value of X, the number of elements in the sample space, and then these two probabilities. Pause here to give this a go. In order to solve for X, we need to use the information given that the number of elements in R or Q is 68. We can then add all of these together and put them equal to 68 and we see that X is 7. Then for 4.2, to get the number of elements in the sample space, we add the number of elements in R or Q and the number of elements outside of R or Q and so 68 plus 12 gives us 80 elements in total in the sample space. Let's have a look now at the probabilities asked for in 4.3. The first is the probability of an item chosen at random not being in R or Q. Well, here we see that there are these 12 elements outside R or Q. And so the probability is 12 over 80, which then simplifies to 3 over 20. The second is the probability of an item chosen at random being in R but not Q. This means we need to calculate the number of elements in R but not Q. Well, we have X's value, which means this is then 40 minus 7, which is 33. And the probability, therefore, of R only is 33 over 80. You may notice that Venn diagram questions can be quite wordy. Being aware of this and knowing you must just read through the question one part at a time is key and will hopefully help you to not be disheartened. Okay, on to question five now. We are given information about 520 people who were asked about their likes of popcorn and brownies. And we're first asked to set up a Venn diagram and then we're asked to calculate two probabilities. Pause the video to give this question a good read through, maybe two or three times, and then give it a try. When creating a Venn diagram, there are a couple of components to consider. First, the total sample space, then how many events in the sample space and their contents, and also anything occurring outside of these events, but still in the sample space. In this case, there are 520 elements in total in the sample space and two events, popcorn and brownies. And it is given that there are 300 people who like popcorn and 260 people who like brownies. We can put these totals in here like this as a reminder if we want to, but it's not essential. Now to fill in the Venn diagram, it's best where possible to work from the middle outwards. So if we look to the info given, we see that 50 people liked both popcorn and brownies. And so we place 50 in here. Then we use the info for the total who like popcorn and subtract those who like both to calculate those who like popcorn only. And the same then for those who like brownies only. And then finally, we add up all of these to see if there are any elements that lie outside the events. These all add up to 510, and so there are 10 people who didn't like popcorn or brownies. And we fill this 10 in here, in this outside area within the sample space. Let's have a look at the probabilities now. The probability that a person selected at random likes both popcorn and brownies is 50 over 520, which is 9,6%. And the probability that a person selected at random likes popcorn but not brownies is 250 over 520, which is 48,1%. There is even more reading required for question six. Remember not to let this put you off. Just take it in one bit at a time. So you're told there was a survey of 100 people, then you're given a list of outcomes from the survey, and then you're asked some questions. So take a moment now to pause the video and go through all the information given, and then have a look through the questions and give them a try if you feel up for it. In order to draw a Venn diagram, we have to work our way through the information given and decide where to start. Then once we have our starting point, we can decide how to go on from there. In this Venn diagram, we have that the survey was of 100 people and that there were three events, swimmers, divers and water polo. The first three lines of info give us the total number in each event, 50 swimmers, and we use M here because S represents the sample space, then 30 divers and 37 who do water polo. 
And then to get going with filling in the Venn diagram, it's best to start in the middle if we can. So let's look to see if we've been given information on the overlap of all three. And if we go down through the information, we see here that eight people participate in all three sports, which means we can place eight here in the middle. Now we want to fill this next layer in. So if 11 people swim and dive, then this is 11 minus 8, which is 3. And then 13 people play water polo and dive. And so this is 13 minus 8, which is 5. And it says let the number of people who swim and play water polo only be x, which means this is then x here. We can now work with the totals to fill in the final parts of the events. So if a total of 50 swim, then to calculate swimming only means we have to subtract the 3, the 8 and the x from 50 and that leaves 39 minus x. Then for the divers there is a total of 30 and so for divers only it is 30 minus 3 minus 8 minus 5 and that leaves 14. And then lastly for water polo, take the total of 37 and subtract 8 and 5 and x and that leaves 24 minus x. Then finally from this statement we see that 13 people do not participate in any of these sports and so we place 13 outside the three events but still inside the sample space. Now that the Venn diagram is complete, we can go on to finding x's value in order to work out the total number of people who swim and play water polo. So first of all, to find x, we know that there are 100 people in the sample space, and so everything in the sample space must add up to 100. We take the total swimmers, which is 50, then this 5 and the 24 minus x, then the 14 and finally don't forget the 13 and the sum of all of these add up to 100 and so then solving here gives us x equals 6. This is where we read off the number of people who swim and play water polo and so the answer to 4.2 is 6 plus 8 which is 14 and let's have a look now at the probabilities in 6.3. The probability that a person selected at random only dives well, this is the number of people who dive only, and so the probability is 14 over 100, which simplifies to 7 over 50, or we can say 14%. Then the probability that a person selected at random does not play water polo? Well, there are two ways to find this probability. Either it means the person can be selected from anywhere outside of water polo, which means we add all of these up and divide by 100, or the method shown here, where we find the probability of a person selected at random that does play water polo, which will then be the complement, and so we go 1 minus this 37 over 100, or 37%, and find the probability we are looking for, which is 63 over 100, or 63%. Then lastly, the probability of a person selected at random plays at least two of the sports. We find this condition from these areas, and so we add 6 and 3 and 5 and 8, and divide this sum by 100. The probability in this case is then 11 over 50, or 22%. For question 7, we're given a Venn diagram, and we're asked to determine certain probabilities. Pause the video now to give this question a try. Before we get started on determining these probabilities, we need to calculate the total number of elements in the sample space. To do this, we must find the sum of all the elements in the Venn diagram, and we can see the total is 100. OK, so 7.1, the probability of A. Here we add everything in A and put it over 100, and this works out to 3 over 10, or 30%. 7.2, the probability of the intersection of A and B and C, which is the overlap of all three, is 8 over 100, or 8%. 7.3, the probability of not B, well, here we can either add up everything outside of B and divide by 100 to get the probability, or we can work out the probability of B and then go 1 minus this probability to get the probability of the complement, not B. 7.4, the probability of B union C, which is the same as the probability of B or C. Here we add everything in B and everything in C together, making sure not to add the overlap twice, and divide by 100 to get the probability, which is then 77 over 100 or 77%. 
And then lastly, 7.5, the probability of the intersection of A and not C. And this is the same as the probability of A and not C. In other words, where these two areas overlap. And if we look at all elements in A and all elements outside of C, it is these here that overlap. And so the probability we are looking for is 9 plus 6 over 100, which simplifies to 3 over 20 or 15 percent. This is a great question to help you get really comfortable with navigating around a Venn diagram. Our last Venn diagram question is about two events, A and B, and includes some algebra. Don't let this put you off and make sure to use what you know as you figure this one out. Pause the video now for a moment and then we'll go through the solution. In order to draw the Venn diagram, we use the information we are given. So we're told we have two events, A and B. Then we're told that the probability of the intersection of A and B is K. Then that the probability of A and not B is 3K over 5. And the probability of B and not A is K minus 1 over 8. We're not given any other information and so this is our Venn diagram. Next, we have to determine the value of k when a and b are independent events. Pause the video now if you want to give the second part of the question a go now that you know what the Venn diagram looks like. Okay, so we remember our facts for independent events, that the probability of a and b is equal to the product of the individual probabilities. And so in order to solve for k, we need to set up this equation. First, let's find the probability of a and the probability of B. Remember, these are already probabilities, so we need to just add in each case. And now we can set up our equation. The product of the individual probabilities equals the probability of the overlap. And then with some algebra, we see that K can be zero or three over eight. K being zero is not a valid solution because then there wouldn't be a situation at all. And so three over eight is our solution for K. Thank you for watching this video. We hope your confidence in probability is growing nicely as you work through these exam questions. Our next exam prep video covers questions on tree diagrams. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.